feature to the program. The first thing you need to do in order to use this is you need to have some kind of an outline of a design in order to fill. So I'm just going to use a circle for demonstration purposes, and I'm just going to draw that circle now. And then you need to select that item in order to fill it. There are two ways that you can add the motif fill to your object. You can use the quick menu, and it is right here. Or you can select it from the stitch type down here. I'm going to use the stitch type just because that's what I typically do. And you would do it right here. If you use the quick menu, you still can change the attributes to this. So we're going to select Motif Fill. And once I do that, you'll see we have a category here for it. But you'll notice that most of these are grayed out. What you need to do in order to get these so that you can even select the pattern file name, which is right here, is you need to turn Auto Motif on. Right now it's false, which means it's off. So we're going to go ahead and set it to true, which turns it on. And you can also have this automatically come up as true by setting it in your defaults, which is up here on the options menu. And we'll just take a second and find this for you. There's motif fill, and you can just change auto motif to true from false. I will probably change this. I have left this the way it is for right now because this is the way it's going to be for you guys once you first start doing this. So I wanted to be able to show you everything. So now that we have this to true, you'll see that we have most of our things that are here that are not grayed out. We're going to select a pattern file name because we need to tell the program what pattern we want to fill it with. This feature uses the stitch patterns that are already loaded into your program. You can also create your own stitch patterns as well. So we're going to go ahead and click that and you get the little box with the three dots. Click the little box with the three dots and your stitch pattern list will come up. We'll wait for them to all arrive here. And we'll just go ahead and check one. Let's see, what do we want to use? Let's use the geometric design here. I'm going to, you can look at one thing and then you can change it again if you'd like. You just go in here and you select pattern file name and go in and change it. So if you come up with something that you don't care for, you can change it easily enough. We'll click OK. And here we have our design. I'm going to go ahead and show this to you in 3D. It does look a little bit different with all the little dots not in there, all the stitch points. You'll notice, though, that we have jumps that go from the top of one to the bottom of another. So we'll want to eliminate those. And to do that, we're going to draw connection paths. So we're going to change that to true. And if you watch as I do this, all, almost all of those lines, if not all of them, will disappear. And I'll put it in 3D again here for you. And here you can see that those are all gone. Basically what it's doing is it will go around the outside of the object in order to get to the next place it needs to start. You can get different effects from your stitch pattern. This is not just what you're going to end up with. You can change all of these things so that you have a different effect with your designs. Let's go ahead and we'll change the gap to maybe a 40 so that you can see what we have. You can see that what it did was it formed a gap between each row of the pattern, which making a nice little geometric design there. And this you can just play with. Let's see what happens when we do 60. And yet a different look. We'll leave that at that point. If you need to know what these each do, if you click one, as we have gap selected, it will tell you down here in this gray box what that particular setting does, which is very, very helpful. The next one we'll do is we'll do 
the motif offset Y. This is going to change the starting position of each row. And we'll just go ahead and we'll put in, let's see, a 20. And you'll want to watch up here. And you'll see that everything kind of shifted. So if something's not completely to your liking, just play around with these settings and see what you get. Next, we'll play around with some of these other settings. The pattern scale Y end is going to kind of give you kind of a gradient effect. It'll be kind of thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. So let's just throw in a number here. And you'll see how that has kind of changed everything. Let's put it in 3D. So it gives you a little, it kind of stretched this all out and brought it tighter together and it gets looser as it gets to the top. So we're going to continue to play with this. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to zero the way it was so that you can see the effect on each individual setting. And the pattern scale Y to start is going to give you yet a different gradient effect. And you'll see that it kind of mushed everything together up here at the top and then it gets wider at the bottom. So play around with these and see what different effects you get. I'm going to now change my pattern. And I'm going to choose something different. I think that's the one I was playing with earlier. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that one. And I'm going to change this gap back to zero. And this, this one kind of gives you a little bit of a basket weave design, which is really kind of neat. You can also change the angle that these appear. Let's change the angle to 60. And you'll see that now it's at an angle. So you can do a lot of different things with this. Let's go ahead and change the alternate columns. What it does, it says that each column of the pattern will stitch top to bottom, then bottom to top and repeat. Let me move this up so we can get the whole thing. This only works if your pattern is reversible. So this one is, I believe, reversible, so it should work. And this will change the way that it stitches. So let's go ahead and do the stitch out for this so that you can see what it looks like when it stitches. And you'll see that it's going back and forth, back and forth. We'll go ahead and stop that. And we'll select our design again. And we'll change that to false now. And we'll do the same simulator. And you'll see that it's jumping back and stitching everything from one direction to the other. So this may be very helpful for you as well. But definitely play around with all these settings. If you don't like the effect, change it back to the way you had. If you need to, take some notes, and you'll know exactly what the settings were when you had it one way that you really liked and you weren't sure if you were going to like it or not. Take those notes, and then you'll know exactly where you were when you had something that you did like. I'm not sure if this one appears to be grayed out. I'm not sure if it's going to allow me to change this, but I have had other patterns allow me to change the pattern scale, which will make it larger in one direction. So let's go ahead and change our design here. Change our pattern. I did a lot of playing around with this with different different designs. This one should give us some really interesting effects. 
So there's probably something that needs to be turned on or off or something for that pattern scale to be available. Let's go ahead and change this back to a zero. And, oh, okay, it's, it's the auto scale right here. That needs to be turned off. And now we can change the scale. We can, we can tell it what scale we want it to be. Sorry about that. But I'm still learning this too, so I'm just trying to give you information that I have figured out. And you'll notice that this is a very small number. If you make it really large, it's probably going to blow things way out of proportion. So let's just go ahead and do a three, which is a small number. And you'll see that it has completely changed the look of that design. Let's go ahead and put it in 3D so you can see what it looks like. And we'll reduce it down to two for yet another look. If we go to five, I'm pretty sure that's probably not even going to be, well, it's not too bad. It's different. So play around with all these settings. Don't be afraid to play. That's what makes this program so wonderful. If you don't like it, you just delete the design. If you come up with something you like and you like the effect and you think, Oh, that can be used for this other design that I have in mind. Write down the settings that you have come up with as you're playing with this. Then you'll be able to easily revisit what you've done. Or you can save your stitch file, your working file, and then you can look at this as you are ready to work on that. And then you'll know exactly what all your settings were. I think I'm going to go ahead and change this pattern one more time. And I have a pattern that I have done myself. I just have to find it. There. I did a row of hearts. And you can see the way I have the settings. You, if you turn your head sideways, you can kind of see the heart design. So we'll go through and we will change all of this. I'm going to go ahead and change this. To 90 that makes my hearts go side to side and I think we just need to change that scale back to one and be patient with this it does take a minute for it to to do its thing and you'll see now you can see the little hearts but they're all mushed together so let's change the gap between each row let's try two And that's helped. Let's go ahead and make it a four. And like I said, just play with it. See what you come up with. I'm liking that a little better. Let's go ahead and go to six. And that's getting a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and jump to 10 and see what we get. And that's much, much better. And we already have it going alter. Oh, we need to let's do alternating columns. And that's just going to affect how it stitches out. And we've got our connection paths, so we don't have any weird jumps in there. Well, let's go ahead and do a stitch simulator on this and see what it looks like as it stitches. That doesn't look too bad. So like I said, just play with it. See what you come up with, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I hope that this video has been helpful, and I hope that many of you learned something new from it. And keep practicing, keep playing. And I think you're going to enjoy playing with this new feature.